This is a converter from a camper. Uh, it comes from, I don't know what the name of the camper is, but it's a very popular converter. I know one of the brands was the WFCO or the World Friendship Company. I don't know what the brand is on this one here. However, uh, what happened to this guy here is somebody had a 240 volt uh, connection set up, uh, a receptacle set up, um, and this is not a 240 volt system, it's a 120 volt system. Here's the, the, the black and white, um, the, the green I already pulled off because I started to disassemble this here, but the, the green would get screwed in over here. It's a ground to the board. So the alternating current or AC 120 volts comes in here, processed through here, comes out on this side as 12 volts. And you can tell by the thickness of the wires, it's designed for high current. Um, when you go ahead and you, um, <clears throat> Uh, you don't use an electrician to to install the receptacle uh, on your building, whatever, and you go ahead and plug your camper into it. Uh, this guy is not designed for 240 volts. So what happens is we blew the capacitor here, and luckily we blew the fuse, so it may have saved the rest of the components on here. So what I did is I took the screws off, and uh, I look on the back here, and I don't see any damage to the board. Um, so I should be able to replace the capacitor and, and the fuse. The fuse on here looks like the type that's used in a microwave, but this is the capacitor pins that come through. Um, and then this is the second capacitor over here. So I have to unsolder these, I'll get the numbers off the capacitor, I'll order one, I'll put another fuse in it, and then we'll test it and see if uh, this thing will function. Now here's the bottom of the board. I took a soldering iron to the uh, tips that come through the board. It warms up the solder. I was able to pull the capacitor that I had blown. And uh, just for reference, uh, this is the rating of the capacitor. 200 volts, 680 microfarads, 105 degrees Celsius. But uh, you can type these in on the internet and you can find these all over the place. And uh, when you solder it back, I want to get in and I'll do a video to continue this, but you can see the printed uh, terminal on here. The printed terminal and then there's a smooth terminal. All right, those correspond to, on the board here, to here. So the shaded part is where the printed terminal, that's the side it's gonna go on. And of course then the shiny terminal is gonna go on this side. I uh, was successful in pulling the fuse up here, but I might have to do something different. Um, this is a ceramic fuse, and typically these are a slow blow fuse. It's rated at 15 amps at uh, 250 volts. Now, while this equipment is not subjected to that, that'd be the maximum voltage that this fuse could be uh, used in that type of equipment. But this fuse has uh, caps that are soldered on it. If I get close enough so you can see it, if it goes into focus, uh, these caps are soldered in in place with a wire that comes through the board. Um, I may have to come up with another solution because the replacement fuses do not have these soldered in. Uh, I either can try to take these off and solder them on the new ones or um, just devise another way to make it easier to replace this fuse in the future should it ever go. These fuses can easily be found at uh, most hardware stores as this is the type of fuse that's used in microwave ovens. So we had to unsolder the fuse. The unfortunate thing is that I couldn't get the caps off on the fuse. So what I did is I soldered the, I filled the caps up with uh, solder and I soldered a fuse holder in place, which will make it easier to change the fuse in the future and then soldered those back onto the board. Um, just like the original, they used a little bit of silicone to keep the components from vibrating back and forth. So I basically did the same thing. It's just add a little silicone between the two capacitors and then uh, these must be relays. I'm not sure what these are called here, but um, just add a dab in the middle there. And then where the wire would sit on top of other components, the vibration from moving the camper around could cause the wire to prematurely wear. So I just 
put a couple dabs of silicone uh, supported in place. And uh, so now we're going to turn it on. We'll supply 120 volts to this. You'll see the fan will kick in. All right, and then we'll go to the voltmeter and 13.72 volts. So that's a win.